I'm Evan Preparis. I'm Christina Armstrong. I'm Jeff Yonda. And I'm Bryce Robinson. We're from the Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Team. And, and this, this is OCR and R. This episode of OCRNR is brought to you by Mudgear. Happy New Year and welcome to the first episode of OCRNR, where we'll take a fun look at what's trending in the world of obstacle course racing. Hi, I'm Coley from the Mud Movement, and let's be clear, this is not an OCR news program. I am incapable of taking myself that seriously. Uh, instead, it's a restful and relaxing view of the world's greatest sport, hence the R&R. &R. Although we will also have some race results from time to time, I guess it could stand for that and we'll probably do some reviews and reactions. I really didn't think this thing through. Hey, I need to thank friends from the Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Team for introing the show. While a lot of us were just phoning it in in December, these guys were putting on a clinic, literally. They had an open house weekend where you could come in and get some skills and obstacle training from the pros themselves. And so if you made it to Conquer Fitness in Tulsa early December, no doubt about it, you are going to kill it when it comes to Pegatron, Stairway to Heaven, and all the other great obstacles at your next Conquer the Gauntlet race. Now, obviously, I was just kidding when I suggested you may have checked out from your training or phoned it in during the holidays. I know that neither holiday feasts nor freezing temperatures are going to keep you from flexing your grit. Especially if you're this guy. Now it seems everyone and their sister was taking on the 2017 OCR Beast Dead Hang Challenge. This was a month of daily dead hangs with increased hang time every day. Major props to everyone who completed the challenge. Whether you racked up your daily time in one hang or accumulated it throughout the day, you are an OCR Beast. This is for you. Don't think I didn't want to play hanging around by the Counting Crows for that video. I just figured for this first OCR and R, the last thing I need is for YouTube to flag me with a copyright violation. I will, however, direct you to a great song for your next hang. And this is not a challenge. Uh, consider it a reward for doing such a great job. If you want some more hang time, find you a doorway that is still in eyes view of a TV or computer monitor and check out Hold On from Walk Off the Earth. The whole premise of the video is a hold on a thon, so you can see if you can outlast members of the band. Hey, we're going to hear New Year's goals and resolutions from some of your favorite OCR athletes here in just a minute. Plus, I can't wait to tell you about the Mud Movement's Mudden in America Tour. But first, she was the women's champion in the 2017 World's Toughest Mudder. Rhea Coble, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! So Rhea, you're starting your new year moving to Colorado. I guess my first question is, why do you hate the people in California so much? I love the people in California. I just don't like the summer forever. It doesn't make you for winter races. <laughs> oh, see, I think endless summer sound awesome. Uh, now, I want to ask you, when you won that first lap at World's Toughest Mudder, uh, was your crew or, or anyone telling you to slow down? You're going too fast. You're going to blow up. No, they were saying congrats, and I was responding, don't do it. <laughs> Ask me in 10 hours. If I'm still running in 10 hours, maybe then you can say congrats. But yeah, um, I think my husband was trying to slow me down, but he wasn't very successful at it. <laughs> yeah, well, as I understand it, you're the first woman, maybe the first person, to win that sprint lap and then go and win the entire thing. So congratulations, 90 miles, that's awesome. Uh, my question is, what's a more challenging obstacle, snot rocket, funky monkey, or trying to put on a wetsuit? Um, I think it's probably putting the wetsuit on the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what happened there? Did you, did you put it on backwards? First, I had a layer under it. I had my short wetsuit on, still fully on, on my pants and everything. And then we took it off and then took the first layer off, zipped it all back up. And I was like, oh, I didn't remember my 
full suit being a front zip. But I was like, okay, well, I guess it's better than I thought it is. And then I started running and something felt awkward and I realized it was then backward forward. So then we had to redo it all again for the third time. Okay, I have a quick trivia question, Rhea Koval. What do you and First Lady Melania Trump have in common? Uh, we're both Slovenian. <laughs> yes. Well, I was going to say she runs sandbags on the weekend, but now that you mention it, yeah, you're both Slovenian and uh, you were on the national gymnastics team for like a decade, right? Yeah, something like that. I started when I was five years old and I quit when I was 17 and sometime in between for a good, for a good amount of time, I was on the national team. Um, probably, I don't know, starting 10 years old or so. I'm not quite sure when it all started, but um, for most of the time, yeah. Uh -huh. And I hear you can still do a wicked handstand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I also know that, much like myself, you like to sing. Is it true you can do both at the same time? You can sing while doing a handstand. Um, I probably can, and if I'm in a handstand, I have a good excuse why I sing horribly. <laughs> I sing just as horribly not in a handstand, but I don't have an excuse when I'm not in a handstand. No, I'm sure it'll sound beautiful, but no matter how you sing, uh, I'm kind of a professional myself at Name That Tune, and I am so confident in my ability that I think you could sing in your native tongue while doing a handstand, and, and I could guess the song. And here's the thing, you do the handstand until I guess the song. So then I lose if you can't name the song, because then I have to be in a handstand forever. Exactly. I see. Okay. All right. Challenge accepted. All right. That's coming up in just a minute. But first, it's time for the Hobie Call Retirement Check. Hey, Colin. Hey, Happy New Year, Hobie. Well, what's the news? Yep. Still retired. This has been the Hobie Call Retirement Check, brought to you by Mudgear. What can I say about Mudgear that you shouldn't already know? Mudgear Apparel has been tested and proven. You should already have a collection of your crew cut trail socks. We could talk about Mudgear's padded arm sleeve or running freely in some base layer boxer briefs. But I want to talk about their bread and butter, the compression obstacle race socks. Listen, I understand the value of grit, but there's no point in getting rope burn on your calves or scratching up your shins while you're running through brush. Let these socks take the hit for you. I've got some in green and orange and I love them. Whether it's gloves or performance shirts, the point is Mudgear Apparel is is made to last at an affordable price. You're not going to find it in some all-purpose sports store where you can also stock up on Frisbee golf. This stuff is for obstacle racers. I mean, mud is in their name. It's mudgear.com. Go check them out today. All right, we're in the middle of a challenge. And if you haven't done it yet, I challenge you to like this video and subscribe to the Mud Movement's YouTube channel as it will soon be the only place you can watch OCRNR and maybe share it with a friend while you're at it. All right, New Year's resolutions coming up in just a moment, but first, Rhea Coble is multitasking. She's going to do a handstand while singing a song. I can't multitask. I just have to guess the song. All right, so I actually thought about the songs, and I'm going to start very easy. Okay. And then I'm going to go harder. So. Now, so these are songs, I mean, this should be a song that I would recognize. This is like an American song, but you're singing it in, in, Slovenian. In, yeah, in Slovenian. All right, I'm ready. Are you ready? You bet. Okay. Happy birthday to you. That was correct. All right, I feel that was almost too easy. I need a real challenge now. Another one? Yeah, I'll do a harder one this time. Yes, coach of love and coach. Yes, you be love and you wish. What is this? What, I, I know this. What is this? Oh, gosh. What the heck is this? What is this? Eat some fish of the bow. Some of the wretches down and you wish. Oh, my God. I know this. Ray, I know this. What is it? What? Uh, 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 oh, okay. <laughs> what was it? Just do it in English for me. Let's see if it sounds more recognizable. I want you to want oh, me. Oh, I want you to want me. Oh, my goodness. I, I You sounded good. I should have known that. That was good. And that was like a stinking long handstand also. Yeah, and I think if I didn't sing, I could probably do it for longer. <laughs> yeah, well, that brings me to my next set of questions. And I know that you get tired of being compared to other Spartan pros. 
that's not going to stop me from asking, who can stand on their hands longer, you or Nicole? Uh, probably me. Yeah. I'm going to go with me. On Ooh, sounds confident. I like that. In fact, we're going to go rapid fire. I'm going to name the contest. You tell me who would win between yourself and Nicole Miracle. You already said you would win the handstand. What about a staring contest? Me. A rap battle. Uh, Nicole. <laughs> we talked about dead hangs earlier in the show. What about a dead hang contest? Nicole. Yeah? <laughs> she could probably hang on one finger and hang longer than me on both hands. What about a gross out eating contest? Like, like who could eat the grossest stuff? I eat a lot. I eat everything. Oh, so you you got that one? <laughs> You'll win that one? I got that one. Yep. Okay, what about a burpee race? I think I would have a burpee race. I can do some pretty fast burpees. That's what happens when you do them at the finish line a lot. <laughs> you learn to do them really fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And very similar, what about a burping contest? And this could be longest or loudest. Nicole. Or longest. Can I give that one to her, Nicole? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sure she appreciates that. Hey, we're going to wrap up with a very special surprise for Rhea Coble here in just a moment. You won't want to miss it. But first, we asked some familiar faces in OCR to share their New Year's resolutions. My New Year's resolution for 2018 is to take it back to my roots and focus solely on obstacle course racing. So we'll see you out at Vermont for the North American Championships and over across the pond for the Obstacle Course Racing World Championships in England. See y'all in the mud. My New Year's resolution is to dedicate more time to training and get that one-arm pull-up. Ah. My New Year's resolution is to be able to complete Conquer the Gauntlet's Obstacle Pegatron. My New Year's resolution is to turn my weaknesses into strengths and to inspire people through my hard work and dedication. Happy New Year's. My New Year's resolution is to add in more mobility at least every other day. My New Year's resolution is to run a sub five minute mile. My New Year's resolution is to release my book, which I've been wanting to release for the past couple of years now, and also to get a little more specific with what races I want to run throughout the year. Because I've been a little scattered, you know, a beast here, a sprint there. I want to be more specific with that. So, 2018 is going to be a great year, and we'll see you out in the mud. My 2018 New Year's resolutions are going to be to stop procrastinating so much and just to be plain nice. My New Year's resolutions would be for 2018 that uh, I just continue to grow as an athlete and that I get to do more adventure like this. My New Year's resolution is to do a one-arm pull-up. My New Year's resolution is to finally win a Conquer the Gauntlet uh, gauntlet. I'm on the pro team now. I have nine second place finishes, so I am ready for that gauntlet. My New Year's resolution is to run a sub 10 minute two mile podium at two of the US Spartan NBC Championship Series races and come in top five at OCR World Championships in London. My New Year's resolution as cliche as it sounds, is to train smarter, not harder. And uh, I know that sounds cliche, but I'm focusing on quality over quantity and hoping for a better year. So cheers. My New Year's resolution is to redefine the limits of ultra endurance obstacle course racing. Make sure you follow the mud movement to find out more. I am so curious what Evan is cooking up. I don't know, but we will keep you posted. Also, don't feel bad if you didn't make a New Year's resolution. You're not alone. Kevin Gelati here from Spartan Race. So I'm not one that believes in New Year's resolutions. I don't think a calendar should decide when you go after something. But what I do believe in is consistency. You gotta consistently get out there every day. You gotta consistently test yourself, race, put yourself in uncomfortable conditions, and train consistently. I think that's the best piece of advice I can give. If you're thinking of something you wanna change for the new year, be consistent in your efforts, be consistent in your performance, be consistent in your work. So what about you for 2018? One of our goals is to race in a different state every month. We'll tell you about it in a second. Now, someone who had an amazing 2017, Miss Rhea Coble, uh, not only as a Spartan Pro Team member, but winner of World's Toughest Mudder. But Rhea, uh, I understand there was a little bit of a panic when you dropped your energy gels and lost them on your way. Tell us a little bit about that. That was at the very end of the race. It was the second to last lap when I was already counting down how much longer I have to go. Um, I had this flip belt, which was supposed to hold in a bunch of gels, except it didn't really well. And so it was probably just about the halfway point when I got really hungry 
And it like it hasn't happened before. Before I was fine sometimes without a gel, and at that point I really really needed it, and they weren't there. So then I was slugging up that last hill to the cliff, and I was like, oh my gosh, if I jump off of here, I'm not swimming back out. But there's also no way I can drag my feet for another half a mile. And so I get to the cliff, and I'm like so hungry, probably people could hear my stomach rolling. And there's this gentleman, and I ask, do you have a spare energy gel? And he's like, yeah, actually, I do. And he pulls out this blueberry energy gel, and I was like, oh my gosh, life saved. And I made it back to the pit on that energy gel that was donated to me. Well, it sounds like the gentleman who gave you the energy gels really made a difference, kind of saved the day. Rhea, I have an exciting surprise for you, kind of a reunion of sorts. Here he is, the fellow who gave you the energy gels. It's our friend Gary. Gary, come in. What's up, girl? Is that exciting or what? Uh, no. I don't think it was him. I'm sure he has energy gels, but not the blueberry kind. This, Gary, was it the guy that gave you the gels? What? It wasn't Gary. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Gary, you said... Actually, I'm just a big fan. Ray, I want to meet you for a long time. Nice to meet you, Gary. No, no, no. It's not nice to meet him. Dude, you need to go. Like, now. I'll shout at you later, Ray Ray. Dude, just go. This isn't the dating game. Jeez. I, Ray, I apologize. I thought Gary was vetted before he came. Uh, I don't know how he slipped by our fact checker. He's usually very reliable. I, again, I apologize. Uh, anyway... <sighs> Is it true that Faye Stenning once pulled a knife on you? Uh, no. <laughs> Not that I know. Okay. <laughs> oh, geez, this is embarrassing. Okay, uh, Ray, let's end with this. How has winning World's Toughest Mudder changed your life? I mean, are, are you focusing on different races this year? Do you want to stick with that series? Uh, they pay out well. And, and plus, you know, Spartan, last I heard Joe's thinking about upping the penalty to like 50 burpees. Is it making you rethink things at all? It definitely changed my life a little bit. It made me realize that I want to do this full-time athlete thing and give it a shot, hence Boulder. Um, but also, it made me just realize how much I love the endurance races. So I still do Spartan Series because I love the just going really hard for three hours. But there's just something beautiful about being able to jog out the gate and still win by jogging out the gate. So um, I'm going to do the eight-hour series next year. Um, and, of course, coming back for the world stuff is mutter. Um, but with the fact that I'll just do racing pretty much next year, that also means I'll have time to still do all the Spartans because I don't want to trade running up a really steep mountain five times in <laughs> the span of two hours. So I think I want to keep the best of all worlds. All right, Ray Cobble, have an amazing 2018, and thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. I'm excited to see this. All right, they're telling me that we have one more hot name in OCR ready to check in with us. We'll find out who that is in just a moment. But first, I've got to tell you about the Mud Movement's Mudden in America Tour. Now, my buddy Lux and I, we have been racing in Oklahoma and Texas for the last couple of years, but never beyond that. In 2018, we're hoping to race in a different state every month. And not just the same races we've always done, just new locations. No, we're taking on races of all sizes and situations. And that's why I'm excited to announce our first tour stop of 2018. The Mud Movement is traveling to Oxford, North Carolina on January 27th for Legend Race, The Verge. Now we heard that Legend Race puts on a great event in April and in the fall, but this is their first winter race. So we really don't know what to expect other than more than 22 intense obstacles spread out over a little more than three miles. Listen, there's no reason to wait until spring to start racing. If you're in the Carolinas, Virginia, or any of the neighboring states, come race with us on that last weekend in January. We'll tell you more in weeks to come, or check it out for yourself at legendrace.com. And again, thank you to Mud Deer for making this trip possible. All right, I'm told we have one more familiar face with us. It's just been awesome to see all these elite athletes checking into the show. What a great community. Let's see who we have. Hey, Coley. Hey, Ryan. Hey. How are you? I'm good. You? Good?
okay? Well, good talking to you. Yeah. See ya. This awkward moment brought to you by Mudgear. Guys, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you like it, please share it and subscribe. Get to know us on Facebook and Instagram by searching for The Mud Movement. That's also a great place to share ideas for the show. Join me next time for another episode of OCR&R. &R.